Shiny locking Pokemon has to be one of, if not the worst change Game Freak has made to the series. Starting in Pokemon Black and White, Reshiram, Zekrom, and Victini were coded to never be shiny, no matter how many times you reset for them. And this has seemed to only get more and more excessive as the series has continued. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, it had seemed that shiny locking had truly peaked with Game Freak, at least until Scarlet and Violet released. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Shiny locking the starters, nearly every legendary, and actually every gift Pokemon, it felt like Game Freak had found a new stride in shiny locking Pokemon in these games. And some of them didn't even make sense. Why is this random Corvusquire on this rock that you can encounter as many times as you want shiny locked, while this Eldegoss that floats in over this bridge that can only be encountered once per save file is huntable? I'm not even kidding, this Eldegoss that you can only encounter one time per save file is not shiny locked. With so many random shiny locks present in these games, there are a set of Pokemon that you would think were for sure shiny locked, but they aren't. This is the Modestoke Gym, the third gym you need to beat to advance in the story. What makes this gym unique from the others is that the gym challenge requires you to catch or KO the Pokemon that show up within the gym. And what's crazy is that these Pokemon can actually be shiny. Just like the Eldegoss I mentioned before, with Game Freak's track record with shiny locking in these games, it makes no sense that these essentially story-based Pokemon are not shiny locked when so many other Pokemon are. It genuinely feels like Game Freak forgot to shiny lock these Pokemon. But with how unique of a shiny hunt this is, I just knew I had to do this. This is my journey to hunt all the Modestoke Gym Pokemon as shiny. Before we continue, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. YouTube tells me about 75% of you guys who watch my videos are not even subscribed. So if that's you, make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the content. You can always unsubscribe later on if you find my content just isn't for you. The most effective way to shiny hunt these Pokemon is to do runaways. You do this by running into one of the Pokemon, then running away. The, like, obviously. That Pokemon cannot be encountered again until you encounter one of the other Pokemon and then run away from that. You alternate encountering the Pokemon until one of them ends up being shiny. My main target that I wanted first was shiny Vulpix, and I wanted shiny Sizzlipede second. So I was alternating between these two Pokemon, and here's how it went. Shiny dude! Shiny Vulpix! Let's go! Oh my gosh! Yes! And we're just looking at my guys now. Oh. Shiny Vulpix after 30,000 or sorry, 3,000. Wow, it looks even better in game than it does. Unless my colors on my TV are off. Uh, it looks even better in game than on the like model I have over there. Look at that, that's crazy. I took a screenshot on the wrong game. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So obviously it's full odds. You don't even have access to Shiny Charm at this point. This is also um, my second switch I have. Uh, first one's on the left, second one's on the right. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. Uh, this was my main target. I'm gonna try to get some cool screenshots that I can maybe Photoshop and crop so that there isn't a UI in there, but who knows. Um, under odds, which is great, I was really thinking I was gonna get to 3700-ish today. I literally just started. I've been recording for seven minutes. So that's awesome. Uh, this is phase one of the fire gym. Also, I was so flustered and trying to pause my video that I was watching that. I didn't see if it was Square or Star Sparkles. I believe the gyms, they're more likely to be Star Sparkles. So it's probably Star Sparkles. I didn't see it. I didn't get to record it because it's on the system where I uh, didn't have the Joy-Con with the screenshot button. Dual hunting in Sword and Shield is crazy. 
because Sword and Shield has this option where you can do casual controls, and it allows you to essentially just use one Joy-Con to control the game. It's a little harder with just the left Joy-Con, but it does let you do both the left and right Joy-Con. Like, like if I want to do casual controls, I can pick the left Joy-Con only. And if I want to do the right controls, I can pick the right Joy-Con only. Let me record that. That was that was would have been a great screenshot if I was ready. But uh, it's so crazy because you can put casual controls on. And if you can see this setup, I have the left Joy-Con of my first Switch and the right Joy-Con of my second Switch. And I just can control both of them at the same time. It gets a little bit to... It, it takes a little bit to get used to, but... It's really cool that this is a thing you can do if you have multiple switches and sword and shield and I don't know man, it's so crazy. So uh, I guess I'll get ready to fight this trainer and try to catch this Vulpix without failing it and I'll see you when we go to catch it. Okay, I am back and honestly I'm going to remove the other Joy-Con so I don't get confused and do something I will regret. Um, so now, where's my Joy-Con? The challenge is to not mess this up using casual controls, because obviously I cannot switch mid-battle, so we have to... Um, I guess crunch the roly-coly. Alright. And the Pangora was mine, I, I caught it in this save file and then leveled it up. Okay, we are confused now, which is an issue. I hope this Growlithe doesn't get anything just absurd, because if I miss a couple of these... Oh, see, this could be an issue. What if the Growlithe used Roar? Okay, so the Growlithe's trying to attack me, which is totally fine. It will not get anywhere. We're gonna crunch the Growlithe. I'm like actually really nervous about this because I've never, I, I haven't done a ton of research on this except for the fact that obviously you can get them shiny. And, oh, that was the last, okay, that was the last one. So, so this thing can't kill itself. I'm going to false swipe it. Let me, let me double check the moveset. I'm I'm such a paranoid freak when it comes to these things. Ember, Tail Whip, Disable, Quick Attack, Spite, Incinerate, Confuse Ray, Will-O-Wisp. So it can burn us, it can confuse us, and it can lower our PP and be annoying to us, but it cannot kill itself, so I'm safe to false swipe it. Um, I really want to catch this thing in a heavy ball. I just can't put it to sleep. I do have Sing on the Eldegoss, but let's do it. I'm I'm so nervous about this, actually. I am very nervous. This is such a cool hunt that you can do. Like, it's wild to me that they didn't shiny lock these. Oh, we avoided that. We're nuts. All right, hopefully we're faster. We're faster. Hopefully it works. It works. All right, cool. Um, I want to catch this in a heavy ball because I feel like if I evolve this one to a Ninetales, which is very likely... I'm not going to evolve it right away because I still need to get one more. I, I don't know if I want to get one in this game or try to get it in an older game, but it would be like, I think shiny Ninetales matches perfectly with the heavy ball. The gray and the blue is just so good. All right. And I think I only have like two or three heavy balls, which have been traded from other games, like other system or sorry, other save files because I grinded Apricorns and I figured if I'm going to do some full odds hunting, might as well get some Apricorns. Um, again, this is full odds. You cannot get the Shiny Charm at this point in the game because this is the third gym, and I think you have to get to Sir Chester, which is like the seventh or sixth gym, in order to get the Shiny Charm. And you also have to complete the Pokedex, which uh, I think we have all except Milsery filled out because I want to do Milsery hunting, and I want the Dex recommendations, so... I've probably talked long enough about this hunt. Uh, I still plan to do at least one more phase here. I still haven't decided if I want to continue for another Vulpix or go for Litwick instead. Uh, but we'll see. Let me just let me just chuck a heavy ball. I need to save.
and we caught it in a heavy ball so the heavy ball uk it doesn't look super gray on this but uh it's got a really cool effect and the sprite next to it looks really cool um for shiny nine tails again probably won't evolve it into nine tails just yet um and i don't know what to nickname this thing just yet so uh if i can't figure anything out and this hasn't been cut from the video leave a comment down below what i should nickname this shiny female shiny vulpix potentially nine tails and if i like the nickname i will one use the nickname and two shout you out in a future video but uh i guess we can check its summary i'm pretty sure these things cannot have marks despite me having mark charm i don't think it's possible they can have marks uh, i'm gonna guess it's gonna be bold nature that's my guess Oh, it's up special attack. It's mild nature. And yeah, it doesn't have any marks. I don't think it's possible for the Pokemon in the Motostoke gym. Look at that. And it was at the at Motostoke gym. Like, that's such a cool hunt. It blows my mind they didn't shiny lock these things because they shiny locked, like, all the static encounter Pokemon and, like, legend. Nah, I guess not static encounters. That's the wrong, the wrong term. But, like, there's some random shiny locks in Sword and Shield. Like, you can't shiny hunt essentially any of the gift Pokemon. Except for, like, the fossils, if those even count. But, like, like the starters, you can't shiny hunt. The Kanto starters from the Isle of Armor, you can't shiny hunt. You can't shiny hunt Leon's Charmander. You can't shiny hunt anything that someone gave to you, like Poiple or Type Null or, like, I think Cosmog's in this, too, and they're all shiny locked. And then there's just, like, there's a random Corvus Squire on one of the routes that's shiny locked for some reason. And, like, so, like there's just some Pokemon that aren't locked and some that are. And it just blows my mind that in a literal gym challenge, these are not locked. Which is so cool. They need to do more of this. Like, stop shiny locking things because it's more fun when you don't do it. But uh, there, there's some really cool hunts in Sword and Shield. If you guys haven't played Sword and Shield in a bit, I highly recommend it. There's one, there's, like, a one-time encounter per save file where you can get Eldegoss on a bridge, and I really want to hunt that someday. Like, that's a cool hunt. Um, the, the gyms, the gym was on the list, but I want to get Sizzlipede too, so hopefully that's next phase. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, this is going in for the Kanto Shiny Living Deck, so if, if I get a Sizzlipede or a Litwick at any point during this video, and it's in the Kanto Shiny Living Dex playlist, this is why I got a Vulpix, my first shiny full odds Vulpix in this in mainline games. So that's that's cool. Even though I tried so hard in Gen 3. Part of me wants to like conquer the Gen 3 Vulpix. But part of me would just love to get another thing. Like a just like a Litwick or a Sizzlipede. So we, we so we can keep going for Vulpix. So we got a regular Vulpix and shiny Vulpix. And I guess if I stay on this, it doesn't sparkle. There it goes. And it is star sparkles. Okay, so yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the 1 in 16 chance for the square sparkles in the gym. Like, I think pretty much everything that favors star sparkles has the 1 in 16 chance for square sparkles, except for Dynamax Adventures. I think Dynamax Adventures are always just guaranteed star sparkles. But, uh, yeah. We got a shiny Vulpix! Is that- that's a shiny! Shiny Sizzlipede, let's go! Oh my gosh, dude! Oh my gosh! I didn't think it would be that bright, I thought it was good, because I'm obviously- same with the Vulpix. I've been looking at the sprite that's over there, or the model or whatever the, that's over there, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's pretty, like, vibrant blue, but this thing is super bright! Look at this thing! 1366, which is crazy because I obviously I don't have shiny charm and this is like right at odds for shiny charm 
And it's on the same game as the Vulpix, which is crazy. Let's not attack just yet. Man, I, I, I've been getting pretty lucky with these things. This was what I wanted most. I think I'm going to try to go for Litwick. I think it'd be cool to... I don't know why I took that screenshot. I think it'd be cool to uh, try to go for all three of the Fire Gym Pokemon. I think that would be really cool. So uh, I'm glad to have gotten the first two under odds, and they were both my main targets. I wanted Vulpix most, and then I wanted Sizzlipede second most. <laughs> Crazy that, like, it's it's funny that I don't have the shiny charm for this, because, like, this would have been, like, exactly at odds if I had the shiny charm, which I've never done before. So that would have been crazy, but <laughs> this is full odds, so it's exactly a third of the odds. So shiny Sizzlipede, and um, also I should stress, I don't know how it sounds, but uh, if you might have noticed, my mic probably sounds different than in the Vulpix clip. I've been messing around with my mic settings. I've never really felt like my mic has sounded like amazing, and oh, <laughs> recently I've been getting a lot more comments on it about my mic peaking and sounding, you know, not the greatest at some points. I've always had issues with it picking up my voice, and I'm also like kind of a loud talker, so it's been hard trying to find the right settings that like work with how loud I talk along with not peaking, and I feel like I'm almost to where I want it to be, but not quite. I think I might need to add another filter so that it doesn't pick up as much like like quieter sounds because I just recorded audio for a video and you can hear every breath I take so hopefully that's not as obnoxious and if it is sorry but now you probably can't unhear it so uh shiny sizzlipede awesome I'm so like it's cr it's so nice getting them like under odds two in a row too which is awesome um I don't do a ton of later gen full odds hunts. I will in the future, obviously, but my main focus that I have been doing in terms of shiny hunting has been uh, the Kanto shiny living decks, and most of those shinies I can get in the older games, so I don't do a ton of 1 in 40 96 hunts, but uh, recently I've been getting pretty lucky with them, which is great, because when I started doing them, I was getting really bad luck. I originally started doing them uh, in like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I did the Partner Cat Pikachu twice because I failed the first one. I did like all of the Kanto starters from Island Scan and like everything was over odds pretty much. So it feels good to get a couple under odds. And before I catch this thing, I need to check its movesets because I'm a paranoid free. It's level 25. So it gets Coil, Bug Bite, Flame Wheel, Bite. Wrap, smoke, screen, ember. So I believe it would get coil, bug bite, flame wheel, and bite. But even if it doesn't, it cannot get anything that can hurt itself or end the battle. So I'm good to just... I'm recording, right? Okay, cool. I am recording. I'll never forget the Ekans that I did not record the capture for. But uh, I am good to just... Oh, I'm on casual controls, and I probably just started doing something on my other game, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, I'm good to crunch the Salandit. Of course, Salandit's gonna go for Fake Out. That's fine, honestly. I'm gonna... I'm gonna get rid of the Grip, because it has the other Switch's Joy-Con. Crunch... Saland it. This is so nerve wracking. I'm going to be honest. Like you just never like, I know I can clearly see what Pokemon I'm attacking. It's just freaky when it's like any wrong move will just, oh, they only have one. Oh, sweet. They only have one. So I should be good to false swipe. The, la the last, the last, the uh, last trainer had like three Pokemon. So, all right. And I want to say X. I think I have a lure ball. I have two lure balls. I think it'd be really cool to catch. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have, don't I have, this is the same game as the last one. So I have Eldegoss. So unless this thing destroys the Eldegoss, which is very likely, I can sing and put it to sleep to try to catch this thing in a lure ball. Because I think that'd be really perfect. Really, uh, well, I mean, the, the theme, not really, but the colors. Okay, that did a lot. Okay. 
That did... Hopefully that was a high damage roll. Okay, we got it asleep. Nice. I also... My, my iPad is in the way, so I'm like... I'm trying to look over it to see... If there is... Uh, what my HP's at and whatnot. Alright. Two lure balls. It's one HP and asleep. This can't be that hard to catch, right? Let's go for it. Like, I mean, the red and blue, it's, it matches perfectly, especially if we evolve this into a Centiscorp. And the yellow, it's got yellow on it, too. Like, the eyes and the rings. And we caught it in the lure ball. Perfect matching Pokeball. You'll love to see it. Oh my gosh, that's so hype. I got both of the ones I wanted. Look at that. Ah, oh, I am not sure what to nickname this thing just yet. I'll probably think of something. Um, maybe if not, by the end of this video, if I don't name them, leave a comment down below what I should nickname it, and... If I like the comment, I will one, use your nickname, and two, feature your comment in a future video. Um, same applies to Vulpix. Uh, if I do think of names, maybe I cut it out, but I, if I do think of nicknames, you'll see it at the end of this video, so I guess stay tuned for that, just in case, because I mean, I, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten that far yet, but we're not going to nickname it for now, and let's let's check its summary. I'm going to guess it's going to be Rash Nature. That's my guess. It is adamant. That doesn't seem bad. That seems pretty good, actually. Look at that attack stack compared to the special attack. And it's got it's got bug bite, bite, flame wheel, which I believe are all physical. Yeah, they are all physical moves. No idea. I, I don't know Pokemon stats by heart, so I don't know if Senta Scorch is like actually crazy like that or whatnot. Okay, my computer was bugging out, and I was honestly scared the recording was corrupted, but it wasn't. We got it. Which we're great. But, uh, yeah, let me show this thing <laughs> Let me show this thing off. This video's probably going to be way too long, but who cares? So we got a regular Sizzlipede and shiny Sizzlipede. That doesn't sparkle because I can just have it not sparkle as long as I want until I hit A. But we'll have it sparkle. There we go. Look at that. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to cut here and I will see you on the next shiny. Hopefully it's Litwick because it'd be so cool to complete the whole set of these. So uh, yeah, I'll see you then. After getting both shiny Vulpix and shiny Sizzlepeed in the exact order I wanted them, I figured I had to go for Litwick to complete the set. I started doing runaways between Litwick and Sizzlepeed until I hit about 3500 encounters, which is already my longest of the three. I was really worried about phasing on a second Sizzlepeed, but that was when I found out you can actually soft reset for these shinies. The way this hunt works is that the Pokemon are displayed as overworld encounters, but are actually random in grass encounters. For those who don't know, overworld Pokemon in Sword and Shield have everything about them, including shininess, generated upon spawning in. So normally you cannot just save in front of the Pokemon and soft reset to get the shiny, as you'll encounter the same Pokemon over and over again. The random grass encounters have everything about them, including shininess, generated when the exclamation point shows up. But these gym Pokemon, even though appear as overworld encounters, actually act like the in grass encounters. But what makes them even more unique is that the exclamation point doesn't show up until you run into the Pokemon. Meaning you can actually save in front of these Pokemon, encounter them, soft reset, then encounter them again, and it'll still be a different one every time. This is a great alternative from the Runaways, as for me, one of my save files got the other two shinies, and even if you withdraw from the gym challenge and they even tell you you'll have to start from the beginning, they just straight lie to your face about that, as if you re-enter and catch a third Pokemon, they will automatically force you to complete the challenge. Meaning for me, if I encountered another shiny Sizzlepeed on the same game, I would have to start a new save file in order to keep hunting for the Litwick. So I had to trade the efficiency of the Runaways to being guaranteed to get my target this attempt. But this Litwick hunt was going to end up being more than I bargained for. Remember when I said it felt like Game Freak forgot to shiny lock these Pokemon? Yeah, for this hunt, it really felt like they randomly remembered to lock them, as I went over 20,000 for this shiny Litwick. The paranoia was setting in, and even though it's very obvious these shinies can be reset hunted, I kept worrying I was doing something wrong. I 
took to Twitter and asked you guys if I should stick to doing resets or go back to Runaways. It was an extremely close poll, but ultimately you guys decided I should go back to Runaways. Even with the poll deciding what I should do, I was still so uncertain. If I want 20,000 just to get another Sizzlipede, I would have to potentially do this all over again for Litwick. Full disclosure, I didn't even initially want to hunt for this shiny Litwick. I figured I may as well though since I got the other two pretty quickly. With how indecisive I was, I figured I would alternate between Runaways and Soft Resets, hoping that it would give me the odds I needed to most likely get Litwick. But before I could even go back to Resets, this happened. Yes! 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 Oh! Shiny! Shiny Litwick, dude! Oh! Oh my gosh! Shiny Litwick! Oh! It was on the left game, too! Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Dude, when you go this far for a shiny, you even even obvious ones like this, you start to like question if you're gonna notice it, and there's no question. That was so crazy looking. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, shiny Litwick. After twenty. 1,276 encounters. Oh my gosh. This is by far my longest 1 in 40 96 shiny hunts. My previous longest was um, Bulbasaur in Ultra Moon. That one took like 10,000. And this is double that, almost double that. I think it was like 10,900, but... Oh. If you were to convert this into 1 in 8192, this would be going over 40,000. Which, honestly, at this point is, like, nothing new for me, if I'm being honest. But, uh... Oh, I, c I can't believe it's finally over! It's finally over. Assuming I catch this, I actually, I know it can't kill itself. I, I'm for sure going to catch this. I just have to KO the other teams. It's no different than the other ones. The only difference is that I cannot attack this one because these Pangoros do not have Scrappy. And I don't even know what to say at this point. This hunt has been going on for way too long. Oh my gosh. I... I can't believe it. Okay, so I, there's probably going to be a quick cut while I get this, like, situated, and I'll see you when I go to catch this thing. Okay, I am back, hopefully ready to catch this thing. I'm actually pretty nervous. I mean, this, this thing took so friggin' long to show up. I've been hunting this nearly every day for the past uh, almost two months, I think. Like, I, I think I got Sizzlipede. When did I get Sizzlipede? I got Sizzlipede on January 19th. So like a month and a half. I believe it is the, what, 14th? Okay, almost two months. <laughs> it is March 14th, and I got Sizzlipede on January 19th. This has been almost a two month long hunt. I should start going for this thing because I am very, very scared at least i can use slash which won't affect it so if i like mess up and hit the litwick it won't hit it 
so I can take out these guys. The worst Litwick can do is burn me and, and confuse me, I guess. Of course, it's going to confuse me, so now there's a chance I don't hit this thing. Um, Please go through this. Okay, good. I'm, I'm not sure how many Pokemon this trainer has. I am so glad this hunt is over. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's it. So now... Yeah, no, I can't, I can't like put it to sleep. I don't know if I have anything. The Slowpoke has Yawn, but the Slowpoke is severely underleveled. Do I try it? I think I'm like so much more likely to catch it if I use, if I put it to sleep. I only have so many friend balls. It'd be really cool to catch in a friend ball. If it was like 45% or something, I'd be okay, seriously. And now it uses fire spin. I just need to get like, okay, Mudbray's down, so I don't have the risk of two turns. I just gotta pray it doesn't go for Hex. Cause it's gonna outspeed me every time. This is taking way too long. I'm like really overthinking this. Oh, come on. No, are you kidding? Three shake fake. You're kidding me. I should have just prepared, dude. I had friggin all the time in the world to just like grind out Dynamax adventures and then use scrappy ability. And there goes all my friend balls. That's neat. I was likely to catch it within those three. We should be fine. Oh, there's the crit. That's a 5% critical catch. And it's like 77%. Well, we cut in a net ball. Pretty disappointed I couldn't catch in a friend ball, but I guess that's what happened when you have a level 14 slowpoke. That's the only Pokemon capable of putting this thing to sleep. Oh, well, I don't know what to nickname it. Like all the other ones, I'm not sure what to nickname this thing. This thing will probably stay as a Litwick, considering I caught it in a netball of all things. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have nicknames for my Vulpix, my Sizzlipede, or my Litwick. Vulpix will probably evolve to a Ninetales, and then the other two will probably stay unevolved. So leave a comment down below what I should nickname those Pokemon. And if I like your comment, I will not only choose the nickname, but I will feature your comment in a future video. So make sure you do that. I, I, I'm so done with this. And I like, that was the first shiny of this one. They say you have to start the mission again. He says, if you withdraw, you'll have to start over the next time you give the mission a try. That that's just false. Um, The way it works is it saves how many points you've gotten. So I have two points no matter what now. And um, with the other two, the other game got the two shinies. If I had gotten a third shiny on that other game, it would have automatically forced me to end the, the game and say I won, which is really annoying. That's one of the reasons why you would probably want to do resets, despite them being obviously slower. The resets are better if you don't want to phase at all. And if you have already found two shinies, because if you phase again, like, for example, if I had gotten a Sizzlipede on the game on the right, uh, I would have had to start a new save file in order to get another game up to hunt for Litwick again. So that would have been really bad. But uh, yeah, just a little extra info on the shiny hunt because I've been doing this for too long. I pretty much know everything there is to know about the shiny hunt. I'm going to guess it's going to be Lax Nature. It is timid. That's pretty good, right? Isn't that pretty good? I mean, lower attack. So that's that's got to be pretty good. Timid nature, nice. All right, let's show this thing off. For the last time, I'm encountering this stupid Litwick in this stupid gym. We got a regular Litwick and shiny Litwick. And I can just 
let it sit here without sparkling for as long as I want. But that's, what's the fun in that? I'm going to let it sparkle. So all three were star sparkles. Unlikely they would have been square sparkles for this hunt. But uh, you know what? It doesn't matter because they discontinued square sparkles in every other game after. So uh, who cares at this point? But uh, yeah, so let me run from this if I can. I can run. Nice. And just to show off one last time, we got every shiny you can get in the Motorstoke Gym in Sword and Shield. Still crazy that they didn't shiny lock these, but honestly, with that last phase, it, it really felt like they maybe remembered to shiny lock them. But, you know, I'm just really bad, really bad luck, you know. But uh, shiny Vulpix was the first one we got, which was my main target. Mild nature, as you can see, caught in the Motorstoke Gym. I mean, you guys saw the video, like, if you're this far in the video. First of all, thank you. Second of all, you already know the stuff. First was the Vulpix, my main target. Then I wanted Sizzlipede, got Sizzlipede, second phase. And then finally, once I switch this over, and finally, Litwick as the final phase. I'm, I'm kind of bummed it's not in a friend ball though, but I'm, I'm also kind of bummed I just used three friend balls for nothing because these friend balls aren't as easy to get in this game as they are in Scarlet and Violet's DLC, but you know what? It's fine. I think I still have more to spare. But yeah, that's it for this one. I think there's going to be something I try after this at the end of the video, so I guess stay tuned for that. Hopefully this video isn't super long, but we shall see. Thank you guys so much for making it this far into the video. Before I end, I wanted to try something new on my channel by drawing every Pokemon I shiny hunted in the video. I'll be going into more detail as to why I'm doing this in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss it. But for now, all I'll say is I want to draw every shiny I full odds hunted live on my channel and try to do as best as I can mimicking the old Ken Sugimori style as it's such a nostalgic style that I've always loved. But here are my drawings for Vulpix, Sizzlepede, and Litwick. And that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring those notification bells, all that good stuff. Be sure to join the domination, and I will see you in the next video.